Welcome everyone to this video. In this one, I want to go over Jiji, show you her kit. Also some numbers I ran, showing you how much damage you can expect to deal with each part of her kit that I have available at least. Uh, I would love to show the rotation, but I don't have that fully yet because um, I believe there's still missing parts that haven't pulled up yet in the, uh, the website I use or that I could find around the internet. But uh, whatever I can show you, I will show you. And uh, I apologize if I didn't pronounce the name right. It's the rather strange name for me to try to pronounce. But uh, yeah, let's try to move on. To fully understand this character's kit, first we need to look at the resource that it uses. These, you can hold up to 90 of these, and you gain them from doing normal attacks and intro skills. The reason that I cannot do a rotation video or show you how much damage you do in rotation is because I don't know how much of these you get yet. Right, it's very early into this character, and um. That's not shown anywhere how much you get. So once I get that information, I'll probably update and make a rotation and show you how much you'll do in the whole rotation. With that all out the way, why would we need this resource? It's because it'll empower our resident skill at 60 stacks. It'll eat those six stacks up and spawn two totems, one on the left side, one on the right side. Depending if you tap it and hold it, it'll be on the ground or in the air. You want three of these totems down and the resident skill only spawns two of them. So to get this last totem down, we're going to want to use a basic attack. There's multiple ways you can get this, but uh, what looks most ideal is using a basic attack after your resident skill. So you're going to spawn in one on the left, one on the right, you can then auto attack, and it's going to spawn the third one in the middle. Now, the reason you need three of these totems down is because using or teleporting to each totem gives you one stack. At two stacks, you're empowered, so the third one is going to get buffed up. Once you teleport to that third one, you're going to do an increased amount of damage. So you need three totems down and a total of 90 of this resource to get the full combo off. The role of this character will be that of a sub DPS, a burst DPS, and also a slight buff because she has the same outro as Yinlin and Chang Li, but this time I assume it's going to be 20% towards skill and 25% towards Glacio. She is going to be the best support 100% best support for Jinsi. Now the reason I said that she'll be a great sub DPS is because when we take a look at her ultimate here we'll see that it is like a, a Shincho or in this game a Mortefi but it's legit doing double the damage. So they made sure that she is five star worthy. It's going to do a little bit more than double Mortefi's damage and um, every time you hit someone birds are going to keep flying at that person. You know, birds are going to keep flying in off screen, slapping up that guy, and these are all considered coordinated attacks. If you know anything about Jinsi, you know Jinsi loves coordinated attacks. As for why I say she's going to be a good burst DPS, when I get to the numbers, I'll show you. These numbers are kind of high, and bear in mind, I'm still missing some numbers, so it's going to be even higher, but I will show you the numbers that I can see. So when we're taking a look at the numbers of this character, it needs to be taken with a huge grain of salt that this is character all these numbers are very new and they're going to change like crazy as we get closer and closer to the actual release of this character that's when things will start getting locked in so her base attack is very low at 375 that's um i thought jinsi had low base attack but she came out of nowhere and lowered it even more and um my total attack this is including everything from the stringless passive to her inherent passive um it's, it's like substats, the flat attack from all the echoes, that's everything. Uh, the crit rate, crit damage, that's the exact crit, crit ratio my Encore is using with this exact same weapon as well, Stringless. Uh, this character ascends with crit rate, Encore does not, so I threw in a little bit extra for her. Glacial damage bonus, 112, that is 100% from echoes and the Glacial bow set bonus, also 12% from the Stringless. And the all type damage bonus is coming from echo substats, you know, I'm assuming I... I've hit a substat, one or one or two substats everywhere in uh that's gonna buff my normal attack damage and or my my heavy attack and all that shit. Just as so here's the way I basically did the math for um, her basics. I took all three of her basics and I squished it into one number. It gave me 319. I now that's my motion value for basics. And this is gonna give me the average of all her basic attack damage and not just one. So I take that number, I multiply it by my attack which will then be multiplied by my crit multi, 2.125, that's my crit multiplier. That's then going to get multiplied by the enemy's defense, which will then be multiplied by my damage bonus, that's everything included. And then that's going to get multiplied through the 10% damage reduction all enemies take for all elements. 
This is all assuming that I'm fighting a level 90 enemy as well. So that's why the enemy defense is 0.5. And you'll see that my average number is 14,355. Now bear in mind, when you're looking at her skill that I calculated here, the damage is going to be very close to her next skill, the one where she's flying around throwing birds. This is the original one to put her in that state. You know, the one that's going to spawn in the, the places where she can teleport. Now, the reason that this damage is going to be so close, despite this one counted as skill damage and the next one considered as basic attack damage, is because I'm not using her signature weapon. No doubt about it, her signature weapon is going to give a bunch of skill damage. And right now I cannot see what her weapon gives. So the reason they're only going to be so close to each other is because I'm using Yidlin's signature on this character. Now, Stroke of Genius, this is considered uh, when she's flying around everywhere and throwing birds at people. This is considered that version of the skill. You're going to do three of these, right? And you're also going to use the skill before this to even enter this state, start throwing birds at people. And um, you'll see it's doing very slightly bit more damage, but this is considered basic attack damage. So when we're using her signature and it's giving us a bunch more damage bonus towards the basic attacks, it's going to go a lot harder. Right? So take it with a grain of salt, like I said. Now this over here, Inklet Spirits, these are the birds that fly at people uh, on her ultimate. Uh, they're going to fly in and slap people for average of 3000 damage on my setup. Um, Nothing too crazy, but this is all passive damage that's coming in. I think she gets 21 of these if it's worded correctly. So this damage times 21 over the duration, not that bad. And it's all considered as coordinated attack damage. So Jinsi is going to feast off of this. So those are all the numbers that I have available that I can calculate. Might not be that useful since I can't calculate damage per rotation. I'm just showing you these numbers, which probably knew, probably didn't, who knows. But I'm missing the numbers for... A creation's zenith and i'm also missing damage for stroke of maestro now i want to say these are the same thing just worded differently but creation zenith is the third part the third stroke of genius after it's been fully buffed after you use the two in the air the third one would be a creation zenith or a stroke of maestro but i have two names here and i don't know really which one to use so i'm just gonna leave that out now with all those damage numbers in mind this goes back to me saying why she's going to be such a good burst DPS. She is going to, when you get onto her at least, when you're going to use at least four skills, right? Then you're going to have the normal attack. I don't know how much, but depending on the rotation and the numbers of how much um, of her stacks you get, that'll change and stuff. And of course, the last skill is going to be a big one, which I didn't even show. But... She's going to do a lot of damage because you'll get on her, she'll do that one skill, then she's going to fly around the enemy doing all those other skills, and then she's going to ult, leaving lingering damage as well for the whole team. And this is why I think she'll be an excellent burst DPS as well. And with that, I think I've got covered everything I want to on this character. As soon as I can get more numbers and uh, just more information on the character, I'll start doing videos where I compare her weapon with a Yinlin's weapon on her to see what's best. I'll compare her to other DPS characters. I'll do all that stuff, you know, regular stuff that I do. But, um, yeah. I'm going to work on a video for the Genos guy. The Genos looking dude. Um, kind of excited for his design. And yeah, with that being said, I think I've gotten everything I want to in this video. If you find it informative, feel like, and yeah, he's out.